talking all that jazz today with G Fields. I got my brother in the house, man. My brother from Full Blast Radio. My brother from 20 years ago. Yeah, man. DJ Tiger. What's up, man? Man, G Fields, my brother. Oh, man, it's good to see you, man. It's an honor to be here, man. Yeah. I appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, man. So, Mitchell. you know, today, again, man, you know, the Bridges Hip Hop, you know, it was something that we created, man, to, to bridge the gap between something and nothing or something old or something new Dope. or something Dope. positive or something negative or whatever you need to bridge the gap between. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, the foundation is here. Yeah. You know, you're a DJ, mm -hmm. been an incredible DJ for over 20 mm -hmm. years. I'm sure Thank probably, you, you probably got about 40 years experience I, in that. About 30. Yeah. I started Close to 16. It. Yeah. Man, close to yeah. it, man. I don't want yeah. to tell your age, but you yeah. know. <laughs> hey, so triple good. OG, man. You yeah. know, from the hood. Um, being from New York, man, and that's another solid foundation. Yeah. Hip hop being born in the Bronx or mm. Queens or whatever they, you know, everybody's mm -hmm. claiming different places. But Word. the fact that you are from the Big Apple, yeah. You know, uh. you can't get it any better than that, man. Yeah. You know, talking about the foundation of hip hop, and then the fact that you are an incredible DJ, man. And now, Thank you, brother. you know, fast forward with your own company, Full Blast, but we're going to take a trip back and rewind a little bit. You okay. know what I mean? Because I know, man, getting to the foundation <laughs> of what you do, and um, I just want you to tell the people, you know, how you got started as a DJ and what sparked mm -hmm. the interest in you becoming a DJ. Well, you know what? Um, I, I've come to see that now that my father's influence with records, they had records in the house. And I just kind of realized that maybe over the last four or five years that that's where the inspiration came from. Because I used, I was always used to say like, where did I start to just grab a record, throw it on a turntable, just started mixing and stuff. I just remember buying my first record was King of Rock, oh, wow. Run DMC. Yeah. We had a pool table and I had his record player he had like one of those old Lafayette turntables you know with oh, wow. the wooden base on it oh yeah yeah and I had that connected to a radio and I was just cutting like while I had a tape playing and cutting over the tape you know so who's the first that. person you saw actually scratch Ooh, that had to be Jazzy Jeff on wow. video music box oh wow he was cutting up uh the Houdini record Grandmaster D oh if Grandmaster you please, D yeah, yeah. if you yeah I just remember that like I was like yo that dude so is, is that dope. What, that made you fell in, did that make you fall in love with scratching? Yeah. Is, is, is scratching what really made you want to do it? Did you see the art form was like blending more at that time or was it just scratching? It was scratching at first, yeah. Scratching. And then, yeah. you know, I see, you know, later on when I got into the mixtapes, Ron G, yeah. SNS doing the blends, then that's when I was like, oh man, I want to yeah. do something creative where yeah. it stands out. So, so you had to be have sort of a musical ear to become a DJ because I remember mm -hmm. trying to toy with it a little bit, but I just right. knew that wasn't my craft because okay. I was more of an instrument player before I even started rapping. So mm -hmm. I remember grabbing the turntables and trying to do that at this local record shop. Shout out to Charlie Record Shop in Mississippi. Okay. Um, and I thought it was so difficult to become a DJ, man. Honestly, I got mm. discouraged and I started okay. rapping. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. so, you know, and then I had a mm. DJ, so... I can understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I know that you had a different passion for it. So it was almost yeah. like you became an artist. Yeah, and not even realizing that. I was just, like I said, I just picked the record up. I just wanted to just do it. And it just, every day, like, we'd be outside. And I'd be like, yo, I'll be right back. They'd be like, yo, an hour later, yo, what time got? They'd come in the house, right, and I'm right. in there scratching. Man. So, but it was just, I so, just loved so doing it. So you've been it. had the passion for it for, yeah. forever, man. So yeah. you went from scratching on a wooden turntable because i remember mm -hmm. those too you yeah know, me true oh mm -hmm. so we got to definitely talk about it Word. uh i remember <laughs> those turntables and and just the whole big tv with the tv with the turntable inside the um floor model tv you know oh yeah yeah little yep. needle in there we probably <laughs> been through a bunch mm -hmm. of needles so when was it that you felt that okay i'm a real dj now i'm uh when did you get your first set of turntables busy b Master Pequa, yeah, I remember Busy B more. Yeah, yeah. I bought my first turntables. I bought a uh, Gemini. Oh, Gemini. The Gemini's was back out back then. Yeah, the, the belt techniques driven. and the Gemini's. Yeah, I didn't have a technique for a while. Oh, I was okay. messing with the belt, belt drive. I had to put the penny on the needle oh, wow. so it wouldn't belt skip. Belt drive. Yeah, you know. Hey man, is that not the foundation? Remember that belt slipping off? Oh man, yeah. you had to put it back on her. You had to lift the the yeah. flat up and all that. Yeah, but to me it was just like that's just what you did. You know, right. it wasn't like. Oh man, something real difficult, you know. For me, anyway, I was just like, all right, I just right. got to do it because 
I want to be a DJ. I'm so, a DJ. So were you more familiar with the 45 or the, what, the 30, what is it, 33? Was it 33, the, yeah. The 33 and the 45, I remember. So right. uh, what, which one were you more familiar with, like, as far as using, because I know they were two different type of uh, records. Right, yeah, yeah, just the, the 33s, the 12-inch, yeah. yeah, yeah, singles. I would buy singles, like, all the time. Right. Go to the record store, um, uh, whether it was Upstairs Records, uh the, the Spy and Queens, or even Long Island, they had, um, right. I forgot the name of it now, they they changed the name, but I used to go there every week, every Friday, you know, buy records, buy singles, and I would, I would buy the singles, because the Sam album, Goody? no, no, uh, it was, um, Tower Records, I would go to Tower, oh, I would go to Tower, Tower yeah, but the one I used to frequent all the time was in Babylon, North Babylon, I, I can't remember that shop, but I, I think I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about, um, I DJ now. Oh, okay. I DJ okay. now, yeah. And they had records there. I used to buy the records. And I would always buy singles because the albums, I'm glad I bought these props. Yeah. Because of the grooves. Shout out to them 33s, man. Yeah, I man. about them. <laughs> because there's so many songs, there's there's a lot of grooves. They're thinner. So they tend right. to skip if, if you scratch them. They scratch easily. Right. So I would buy just singles a lot. But I would miss out on, like, the B-side joints. So that later on, you know, we'll talk about later on, yeah. when I started doing uh, mixtapes or sets, or whatever, I would just wanted to get the B side joints, not what yeah. everyone else was playing. Because B side was more the underground. Yeah. You know, if you're on the A side, you had they wouldn't really the play it on the radio. Record, mm -hmm. And then on the B side was that 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 grimy record right. you know, that you want street record. Exactly. You know, at that time. So definitely, man, that is definitely mm -hmm. part of the foundation, man. I'm telling you, man, yeah. who better? To tell that story than you, no doubt. you know. No I, doubt. I remember, man. We go back as far as many, many years. I remember when I first, first known about you. You was a mm -hmm. DJ for uh, Cell. No doubt. Yeah, man. and I had heard sell. about you DJing and around the, uh, the neighborhood, but mm -hmm. as far as the music industry and the rap industry, we're all trying to get in at that time, right? You know. Yeah. And the man, 90s. you had a super household name. You know what I'm saying? At that time, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because you're a very humble guy, man. But everybody knew you. Yeah. Right. So how right. did you get yourself known like that? You know, I I was trying to think like when did it spark when people would ask me to DJ? It was just yeah. like I just like I remember doing parties, but then there'll be other people like years later like, "Yeah, yeah, I remember you did like my my kid's graduation." Right, right. You did my graduation. Now you did my kid's graduation. And I would forget the parties I would do for like certain people. I yeah. guess cuz I did so many, you know, I from the station to Southside, to Greenlawn. You know, wow. I was doing parties, you know what I mean? And you sound like you raised people. You know, you raised a crazy generation to think of about it. people. You know, you DJ for the mama, then then they later on DJ for the daughter for the and the kids. son, yeah. and then end up DJing for their kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, Still, yeah. to this day, man. So that that is an amazing journey, man, and part of the foundation, man, on this mm -hmm. show, man, is, is to bridge that gap. Yeah. So I know that we, we, we're going to talk about a lot. <laughs> I want you to give me the understanding of the art right. of DJing because I know that it's an art mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize how much of an art it is. And it's not just grabbing a record and throwing it on and right. finding another record. Like you have, a, it's time sensitive, you know, yeah. when you're DJing, mm -hmm. then you got the mix of the crossfader. Like mm -hmm. it's a lot going on. It's almost like a drummer having all of these different drums. Yeah. And you a DJ, and then you got your ear going, you got your eyes going, mm -hmm. you got to listen for everything, and then you yep. got your hand movement. This is before the Serratos and all. Before of this. the laptop, yeah. yeah. And I remember you have to bend down and dig in the crate, mm -hmm. and you ain't got nobody passing you those records. You got to yep. get down there and get those records. Yeah. So even carrying the crate. So tell me about the whole setup and what the art really entails, and what was challenging for you, or if it was challenging at all for you. To me, man, it's like, um, like you said, but before the laptops was even, even thought about. Like, there was no thought of that. It was just, this is what you did. You know, you just get the records. To me, you feeling the vibe of the crowd when you're playing the record. You know, usually when I set up, start a party, you know, everyone's not there yet. So you're not playing all the bangers. You're playing some stuff that's, you know, it's mellow or whatever, or people eating. And then when you start to see, okay, two people get on dance, but all right, so let me go into somewhere else. To me, it's like a feeling. It's like a groove. Um, I know when, like, when I'm DJing now online, and I get in a zone, and they say it because I'll look because I, you know, I DJ live, right, right, and on the channel, you're like, oh, he in a zone. We gotta wait for him to get done because it's just a feeling, man. Like I'm grabbing a record, 
playing it, you know, then I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, damn, I could um, EQ this down, bring the next joint in, have them hear the transition mm. of the next record coming, but you're still playing the record that they jamming to, but they're hearing the next one coming in. You know what I mean? It's like the, the turntable is an instrument, mm. and a lot of people... I mean, nowadays, I don't think treat it as an instrument. They just plug and play, and I'm just going to throw a song on. Right. But to me, it's a it's a feeling, man. Like you said, vibe. when you're playing the drum, you rocking the sax, that's a right. feeling. Yeah, it's a vibe. You're not, it ain't a robot. Like, uh, uh, you, right, right. You know? It's, yeah. it's, it's an orchestrated thing that you have to orchestrate it to, to make it work. Right. Like, you know, the craft of, of, of the sax is, you know, having those 33 keys. You're using the palm of your hands. You're using the middle of your hands. You're using the side of your fingers, mm -hmm. you know? The tip of your fingers, you arching your fingers in the C cup. Right. And, you know, it's a certain dynamics to it. So yeah. I know that the, the the blending, and I've seen you DJ, man, and I've seen you do some amazing behind the back, and you know, you mm -hmm. got into all of that, man. So I, you was able to get the swagger with it, you know, earlier on, you know. Yeah. So that that mm -hmm. kind of put you yeah, in no. a situation, man, where people wanted you. Right. You know, people call right. for you, man. You know, mm -hmm. and to this day, they still call for you. So you have done. A super amazing job, man, and what you're doing, man. And yeah, now that. that you sit here mm -hmm. um, 35 plus years mm -hmm. later, man, and still say that I can still rock with the best of them right. as far as, you know, getting down. Because, mm -hmm. you, like you said, everybody got a Serato box now. Not everybody knows the dynamics of the craft. You yeah. know, they don't look at it as an art form or, or as an instrument. Mm -hmm. But you still, to this day, can use it as an instrument yeah. that must be an amazing feeling it is it is it is and it's like you know like i said with the technology don't get me wrong technology is dope like it's what amazing. they did with serato they got the phases i use the phases now where you're not even using the needle so you ain't got to worry about it gets dirty mm. or whatever you know if it you know skips whatever Can but clean the needle no more nah there's a phase it goes in the middle of the record or like on the uh spindle oh. and it controls the, wow. the songs on a laptop. So, so there's no skipping? Nope, there's no skipping. But you know, you just gotta make sure they charge. But what happens is, this happened to me a few times, my computer crashed or the Serratos went dead. Oh. Now, if you wow. didn't have these <laughs> or the needles, right, party's the party was over. Was over. What I did was, oh, well, I reboot the computer, I switched the mixer over to uh, vinyl, throw some vinyl on while the computers boom oh, back wow. up. So you have the ability to still kind of, it's almost like digital and analog and you still have the ability to mm -hmm. touch it yep. or use the computer. That's yep. I didn't even know that. Yeah. You see, that's some mm -hmm. things we educate. Shout out to Tiger for educating us on <laughs> turn Yeah, I'm man. still learning, you know, but yeah. uh, to me, it's, it's, it's like you said, it's a vibe, it's a feeling like it's instinctive. Yeah. I, I've, I think I've, I've seen that, I've been feeling that a lot mm -hmm. over the past few years, like the instinct to just go somewhere at the drop of a dime. Right, right. And not even like, I'm not even thinking about doing it. I'm just doing it. Like, right. But I guess, you know, to the outside, you know, they're like, oh, this dude's in the zone. This dude. Yeah. But to me, I'm like, yo, this is what the DJ's supposed to be doing. Right. So you this, know so you know, many DJs. I got to ask mm -hmm. you, who's your favorite DJ, man? Well, I know it's hard. <laughs> I know. I, mean, I need one. Well, personally, that I know, um, DJ Diamond, real good friend of mine. You know, he DJs for EPMD yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Super dope DJ. Uh, yeah. DJ Goomba, who's uh, EP, uh, Keith Murray's DJ. Oh, wow. Um, those are two, you know, personally, personally dudes I know, real good dudes. But if I had to um, say legendary DJ. Oh, legendary? Pff, man, I can't even say one. I mean, from Premier to Q uh, Burke. You know, we getting into the turntablists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Rock Raider, rest in peace. One of the rest dopest peace, Rock Raider, yeah. DJs. Like, I can't, I can't even do the sucker MCs <laughs> back to back yeah. that he does with the vinyl. If you see a set he does with sucker MCs, it's yeah. classic with vinyl. And I'm trying to do that with the laptop. You know, wow. I mean, can't come close to what this dude's like a straight legend. Wow, man. But to me, those dudes like inspire me to like. Just be better, you yeah. know, be better. And shout out to Premier, too, still yeah. doing his thing after all those years. All, all these years, yeah. So tell me about people like Eric B. You know, did you, mm -hmm. did you early on get anything? Who did you take from? Because, like, everybody take from somebody. And it's right. cool 
It's mm-hmm. not like biting, you know, back in the days we would call influence. it biting, you know, but mm-hmm. it's influence, right? Right. So who did you take the influence from? Like who influenced you to like get a style? Because every a DJ got to have a style. I think, um, cause like, like, cause back in the eighties, even before rock him, Jam Master J. Wow. Um, amazing. amazing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I can see that. Um, definitely Jam Master J. Run DMC. I big, I was a big Run DMC fan. Mm. Um, Jazzy, like I said, Jazzy Jeff, watch him on Video Music Box. You remind me of Jeff a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, man. Yeah. Just because just okay. how humble Jeff was okay. back in the day. You know, how right. Jeff was super quiet. Will was always the loud one. But, right, right. You know, I remember, you know, um, the Hilltop, you know, Philly. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, and, and Jeff going in. And, and Jeff was actually underrated even back then. Yeah. Because he was so humble and quiet. Right. When he got on those tables, it, it was like something you never like saw night and before. Day. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that phenomenal. Guy, the transforming to me, the transforming. Okay, we're going to get into that. A whole nother art form yeah. of DJing. Yeah. When transforming came, it was a language at this point. Yeah. So when did you first learn to transform? Oh, man. Because I've heard you do it. I Man, I, it's been so long, man. I, I mean, I know... When I heard him do it, I said, I, I got to learn how to so do it. So you heard him do it first. It, yeah, it was yeah. just so different. It, you know what I mean? You just cut and scratch those country. You're making the record talk. Yeah. I mean, it's actually yeah. robotic. Yeah. Before robots. Were. Were. <laughs> before the new technology. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was, a, it was something that stuck in our ear, but it was always a specialty. Yeah. And all it DJs was. could not do it nah. in the beginning, you nah. know? And... That was something that I know I saw you do before. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I knew that you had been on your dean, mm-hmm. you know, when it came to that. And I know that you was probably researching like crazy back in the day just to become a better DJ. Because, you know, it was a very competitive market when we grew up. Right. But it was always friendly competition. It yeah. Was never. With no beef. Know, we no beef. We're going to take them and put it on wax. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you did something, a better scratch. Uh, the other guy did a better scratch than you, and, right. and you know he was at a party. Y'all rocking out, the better man won. Y'all mm-hmm. shook hands and was over. Right, you know. But now, man, we got um, a lot of the young talent and artists that are out there um, creating beats. I do blame some of the record labels for yeah. allowing them to get on these platforms and mm-hmm. giving them the type of money that they need to go out there and buy the guns and do other things, even though they're not telling them to go buy guns, but Mm -hmm. not screening them, not getting artist development. You know, we come from a time of artist development. There's no development. There are no rules. There are no more referees in this game anymore. So how do do you actually feel about that? I feel very... um, This is your craft, too. Deeply, yeah. I feel very... I don't want to sound like the old man hater, but when, when you see it ain't right, it ain't right. Like, I don't care like where it's gonna come from, you know. Um, you know, we, we talk about that like amongst my group of people, mm-hmm. you know, in full blast, you know, it's just that there's no there's so no soul to mm-hmm. it. And it it don't start with hip hop, the R and B too yeah. as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what you doing, bro, is is so dope. Yeah. I just wanna just commend you I real quick with that, the jazz, man. with yeah. the you know what I mean? Cause that's like like you said, that's soul. That's a the feeling. Foundation. Yeah, and to me, a lot of these people don't have that, and or they don't care because as long as they're getting the streams, they do something notoriety. Yeah, for clicks and views, whether it's positive or negative, they don't care because of that check that's coming in. Yeah, for clout. For clout. For yeah. chasing clout. Yeah. Man, I just, I just know that you are a lot like myself. You know, growing up and coming from the foundation of this, we would like right. to keep the integrity of hip hop. You know, for yeah. as long as we can. We want to see right. it go as long as we can. And we mm-hmm. see it slowly coming to a demise. You know, eventually we'll crash and burn as much as we love it mm-hmm. if it continues to go this way. Right. But I always tell people we have to learn how to separate hip hop from rap music. Yes. Yes. Because hip hop is not that. Exactly. So the people who are doing a lot of these things now, they're rappers. Yeah. And they're, they're, very and they're labeling it hip hop culture, right, which hip-hop we know culture, not right. to be. We know not to be because yeah. we were always safe and steadfast in where we walked mm-hmm. with hip hop. And every time we put it on our back, we put it on our back for pride. Now right. it's about the dollar bill, it's about the gold chain, mm-hmm. it's about the car, it's about what people can do, you know. And with money right now, it's not even about the talent anymore because right. 
people have to sound alike now to even make any sense. Yeah. You know, again, nobody can be different because if there's a trend, you better be following that trend following and supply the trend. demand. Yeah. Because that's what type of market it is. So mm -hmm. I know that you now have a radio station, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's called Full Blast Radio. Yes, indeed. And I want to mm -hmm. tell you, man, that I have tuned in and mm -hmm. and it's been amazing. And, and I know that you've spent, spent some of my music on oh, yeah. on the station, you know, quite often. Bro, Sunday's I really evening. appreciate that. Mellow um, jazz. Yeah, and, man. You know yeah, what I mean? So, so. I, I, I want to I wanna thank you for that platform and just give yeah. an opportunity for anybody to be heard. Definitely, you man. Know, and, and just that. staying in your craft and staying and just walking in your truth, bro. You know, because I'm going to tell you, bro, like, I love you from the heart, bro, because I thank know you, that you are genuine, man, from the thank heart. Thank you, man. And ever love since you too, I've bro. known you, bro, thank you, man. You have been nothing but nice and professional. Thank you, man. I don't know one bad thing that somebody's <laughs> ever said about you, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And that I mean, you is... Find, you'll, you'll find somebody, but, you know. Maybe a baby mama. Yeah, yeah. Now, ain't gonna <laughs> <laughs> now, shout out to baby mamas, mm -hmm. man. You know, baby yeah. mama's cool, but uh, you have stood the test of time. Thank and you. now that you have this full blast radio station, tell mm -hmm. us what made you get your own radio station and why do you call it full blast? Man, well, I was called full blast earlier. Like when I was DJing, mm. I said uh, DJ Tiger, aka Full Blast. Okay. Um, you know, people in the hood was calling me that and stuff. And uh, I don't know where it came from. I think w someone thought of it, but um, even if this is before, way before I even thought about radio right. station. But that came about because um, I was DJing um on uh, Tuesday nights. On WSB, Stony Brook. Oh, Stony Brook Radio. Yeah, shout out to yeah. Stony Brook Radio. Battles on Radio. I remember that. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Digital. Yeah, know him um, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we had Struggle, um, Lies Pop. Oh, man, Struggle. Yeah. And um, um, uh, a few other people. You shout know, out to Jason was, Berg. I remember Jason Berg being over Jason there. Jason Berg, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I came in, I know there was a phase. They had a, mm. they, they were on and then. They had some people that were part of it, and then they yeah. did their own. Then I came in. Phantom. After Phantom was over there. Oh, yeah. yeah Phantom. That was, um okay, there was a Monday night show <laughs> yeah. as well, a hip-hop yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Phantom. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was cool, too. Yeah. AC the God, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, so, yeah, so I was DJing, you know, on there, and they would have guests come through, and um from, like, large professor would come, and do interviews, um... Evil D, when the beat miners, they would come through. They we'd have like hip hop marathons, and I was saying, yo, we should be streaming this stuff because it was it was still radio. It was analog. Yeah, it was we had an FM station, but mm -hmm. to me, a lot of people were going on the computers. This yeah, is yeah. you know this is 2014, yeah, 13, 14. I'm like, yo, we should be streaming these live, right. showing the people the visuals, and you know, people's like, yeah, yeah, but then nobody really took yeah. that initiative to be like, yo, we should be setting some cameras up. And then right. it was like, well, people might take the cameras. Cause, you know, it was <laughs> just like, weird. Long Island, though. You know yeah. You got to think about Long Island being one of the most um, crime-rated places at that time. And people probably don't even, they sleep on Long Island. And, yeah. You know, there was a lot of crime going on back then. Right. But, you know, if you was in love with hip-hop, a lot of times you're going to dodge those bullets. But yeah, you, you got to deal know, with that part you of it, too. You know what I mean? But yeah. Stony Brook, I remember, it stretching all the way out to almost the Long Island Sound. And going yeah. as far as Hempstead, you know, as far as the frequency. The frequency, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we I remember got when you get so far, we're cut off. But mm -hmm. Stony Brook, I believe, was the foundation for a lot of the uh, uh, Long was. Island rappers. Yeah, it that definitely people was. People just kind of lost and forgot that, you know, kind of forgot about Stony Brook. And yeah. Stony Brook, shout out to Stony Brook University, is a college radio station. Yeah, you exactly. Know? We re we got we had uh people from Connecticut tuning in. Yeah, and I remember it was a very brought. small room in mm -hmm. the beginning. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, now they they, they they uh they moved it. They oh, have wow. a yeah they have a better studio now because okay. I was there like like I said before we moved. They mm -hmm. finally moved out of that that old because I've been there yeah, what, was since in the, the old building sixties yeah. I think yeah, that yeah. and they still had the dials on it. Yeah, it looks it looks kind school. of creepy when yeah. you went in there, but. I mean, that's what we had. That's but the foundation the, again. Exactly. That was yeah. the foundation. So mm -hmm. you being at Stony Brook Radio in Long Island and knowing that a lot of the rappers, even though they portrayed them to be from the city, like Eric and Paris. Shout out to Eric and Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, EPMD. Word up. Um, De La. Uh, De La Soul. Yeah. You know, Prince Paul and all of them. Um, Craig Rakim. Yeah. 
Craig right. Mack, you know, no. so many other different artists that come out of Long Island. I believe Met the Man from Hempstead somewhere mm -hmm. like that. Prodigy, you know, Prodigy too, Recipes. Recipe Prodigy, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and it's just, it's, it's just, it just puzzles me sometimes that Long Island never got the recognition. And, and, Until later, I think. Well, I found so you're out. you're saying like. I kind of found out the reason why. You know, mm -hmm. I remember, you know, Eric and I being really good friends, being right. one of my best friends. Right, um, That's right. And me being his engineer at times and learned earlier on that I believe what Russell and them did not want to do is send a message that this was in New York because remember they would say Brooklyn, Queens, Staten mm -hmm. Island, um, the, Bronx, the Bronx and they would never mention Strong Island. Yep. Every once in a while somebody would say Strong Island but it got to the point where you almost didn't even associate it with New York. I know. It's and crazy. it was it was an injustice for me, to, for a lot of artists and people like myself and yourself that was out there mm -hmm. that was kind of disconnected from 45 minutes away. Yeah. You're in Manhattan. So what they did was they made a lot of them artists take their pictures in the city because they wanted the, the aesthetics, the buildings. Because you got to realize, yeah. I remember first moving to Long Island, I actually took the Greyhound from San Diego, California, mm. all the way to Long Island. So I went across the map. Four days, four and a half days Damn. on a bus for oh two kids, God. right? On the I get to that. New York City. <laughs> I've been dreaming about this place my whole life. Mm -hmm. I've been watching every rap I can recite, rhymes front to back, mm -hmm. and most rappers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm dreaming. I'm, I'm, I'm in Mississippi. I got to get out of here. I get to New York, right. and I see the buildings. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And my kid's mom said, no, we got to go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. I said, it's another bus? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, take us to Long Island, Strong Island, you know. And she just, you know, bragging, Strong Island, you know where Brock Kim and all of them from. Mm -hmm. So as we're going down the LIE, and I didn't even know what the LIE was at that time, we Damn. come out of the Midtown Tunnel. We're leaving the buildings are getting smaller. <laughs> seeing trees. I'm seeing all of this yeah. stuff. I said, what? where's the buildings? Mm -hmm. We leave in New York. She's like, no, nah, trust me. When you get to Long Island, you're going to see more rappers in Long Island that you probably would see yes. in Manhattan. See, yeah. I said, I don't care what you say. <laughs> That's New York back there. So even you was just like. <laughs> Man, I was, I, bro, yeah. I, was, I was thrown. And then it really was in my, bothered my spirit because even though we was, she was laughing with me, I was really upset mm -hmm. that I was leaving New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I got to Long Island, <laughs> I went through Hempstead. It still had a little bit of city etiquette. But as we passed it, and when we got to Suffolk, mm -hmm. I said, these neighborhoods look like Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back home. What's going on? So the first thing I did was when I got on the block, we we stopped in Wine Dance, what they call Crime Dance. Shout out yeah. to Crime Dance, Wine Dance. And uh, her father, real quick, had a uh, 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 townhouse, like with some apartment buildings oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And we, were, we got out the building. And the first time I actually got out the car, I saw Eric B. First time. Eric B. was across wow. the street talking to a neighbor. Okay. And I said, that looked like Eric B. And, I, so. and that convinced me that everything in Long Island was real because I just started to think it was this one big lie. Mm -hmm. And y'all took me, got me all the way out here in a country place in New York. Right, right. And y'all ain't got no everything. connection to mm -hmm. Manhattan. And I mm -hmm. saw Eric B. across the street, man. My first time getting out of the car. After mm -hmm. that. I went to Huntington and met La Mel. I know you remember Okay, La Mel. yeah. Shout out to La Mel. No Mel, word and up. I, I remember La um, working he with He managed the Deadly Venom. Deadly Venom is yep. in Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, man, now I'm here. Yeah. You know, but it, the buildings are still bothering me because I'm still waiting to see skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, some more places out here. This ain't just it. Word. You know, and I'm like, okay, but long story short, um, Long Island was a very interesting place. Mm -hmm. uh, did not realize how much hip hop lived there. Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Arden Roosevelt. Wow. Yeah, I remember the first Before. studio that I went into was yeah. um, Dr. Dre. Um, from um, not not Doctor. Tomorrow, Ed Lovin. Ed Lovin, Doctor Dre. Yeah, right. Had mm -hmm. a studio, and I remember the two and a half inch tape, real real. Oh shoot! And I was over there switching out tapes. And I kind of learned to switch out tapes. You know, I had a little job, mm -hmm. you know, because I wanted to learn more about the equipment. Right. And I remember meeting Prodigy over in Roosevelt as well. Mm -hmm. The first time I ever saw Prodigy so. riding down the street on a moped. Mm -hmm. you oh, know, yeah, before yeah. he was, you know, a rapper like mm -hmm. that. But he was already known in the neighborhood. But long story short, I, you know, know that Long Island is a melting pot.
It is, and man. for you to be coming out of there at that time and being a DJ, which was one of the hardest things to do because it wasn't like grabbing a microphone and just spitting a bunch of words. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it was an art. It's an instrument. You had to learn it in and out. You know, to rock the crowd, keep the crowd. Keep the crowd, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're sitting here with a Wu-Tang mm -hmm. shirt on. <laughs> I see you with that Wu-Tang, that the w. w. All the time. You know? Shout out to man. the Wu Tang Clan. So let me so, let me see that, man. Iconic, man. Let this, me see that. The start of the Shout out to Start of the, the Wu Tang. History, man. Shout out to Worldwide. Wu Tang Clan, y'all. Yeah, man. This must be one of your favorite albums or your favorite groups. Because I yeah. notice and I see your show a lot. Mm -hmm. You keep that W. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah, man. Every Wednesday I used to do a a Wu Tang. Uh Wu Tang yeah. show. We do it every fourth Wednesday, but Okay, uh, so you that yeah. that's pretty much the Wu Tang show is something that you want to keep wide wise because it's thirty six chambers. Um, no, well, actually, I was doing it every week on YouTube. I moved from YouTube to Twitch, oh, and yeah. then as I started doing other shows, it started going, um, you know, maybe other other two weeks. But then I was like, man, I don't want to do it every week, and because people are kind of requesting the same Wu Tang song, yeah, yeah. Like I want to hear Cream every day, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, Even though it's right. dope, I want to hear some B side joints, right, Killer right. Army. Kill oh Priest. man, kill an army. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's another DJ, DiBiase. Shout out to him. He's from Canada. Shout out to DiBiase. We put together a um, Wu Tang, which is a Ray Train. So each DJ DJs for an hour, and then we bring the mm -hmm. whole group to another DJ. Oh, so wow. each DJ is playing all Wu Tang, but now I get to play my blends. Uh. So I'm blending Wu Tang with R&B. I did a last last show. I did uh, called it's called Enter the Tribe. A quest to the thirty six chambers. So oh, I blended wow. tribe, so blended tribe, and that over Wu Tang beats and vice versa. And shout out to it's like tribe, a two hour man. set. Yeah, rest in peace, fight. Oh, fight, dog, man. Put one yeah. up for the fight, yeah, you know. Absolutely, man. But uh, yeah, we, I love doing that. It's every it's every last Wednesday of the month we do that uh, live on Twitch. So what made you do tribe mm -hmm. and Wu Tang? That's like a different. Oh. that's a whole different blend. Man. I know. What, they completely what made you do that? Because. These two albums have a distinct uh, attachment. They were both dropped November 9th, 1993. Wow. The debut and their third album. Is that not bridging the gap? Bridging it. That's how I bought, you know what I mean? I knew, you know, yeah. this was this was going to be Hey, that's the dope. sauce right so, there. I got to yeah. get a copy of that blend. I got you. I got I'm you. Seriously, you know, because mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite albums. From the no doubt. Right oh, there. man. It's yeah, like to me. Those, you just put it in and just... Yeah. And both of those albums, you just put them in and you don't got to change right. it. You ain't skipping them? Yeah. You ain't it's skipping gone. nothing. Yup. So... Front to back. Wu-Tang Clan um, recently had a um, show. Uh, a a still in production, right? Uh, for, for, uh, New, York, uh, New York State of Mind? Yeah. Yeah. You talking about the concert no, or the no, show? No, no, I'm talking about the show. Yes. No, I'm talking about the, the reality, not the reality yeah, show, but the series. The final season, the yeah, Wu-Tang yeah. Saga. When's it coming out? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure that out because I'm, I'm like, more. they're still relevant is what I'm saying yeah. to you. Right. Like, you sit here today with a Wu-Tang shirt mm -hmm. and a vinyl, yeah. and they still relevant. Yeah. And there's been rappers later. lately talking about how older artists are not relevant. Oh, man. And yeah. I think that's the biggest lie that yeah. people can tell because they're not even mm -hmm. doing their history. No. They're not even focus on what's going on now. Did they not see a whole series go on Wu Tang Clan? He cleaned that up quick though. I I so I give him that. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I don't wanna bomb on him. But yeah. uh, and they actually Nas being the OG went to him and they did a song together. And did a record together. Now yeah, I was so. gonna get into that. So appreciate that. Shout out to Nas. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to the young man. Um I'm not a serious fan of the young man. Um Twenty One Savage is somebody yeah. that um you know, I saw earlier on in his career mm. um, that wasn't where he is now. And right. he was super humble at that time. Mm. And just to hear that remark kind of really, really bothered me a little bit only because I know that he is dedicated at what he has done for himself. And right. I know that he's hungry and he, and he, he strives to be the best, but we got to respect our OGs. Yeah. Because Nas is somebody that's been there since Roxanne Shantae. Mm-hmm. You know, again, man. foundation. Yeah, that's like one of us saying, man, Earth, Wind, and Fire, they ain't relevant. Like, just because they ain't on the radio, right. yo, these are gods right. of our culture. Jesus like, how dare relevant. you? Yeah, like, <laughs> come on, man. It's, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we go back to the, about the clicks and the likes, or they're playing on the radio. It's not about that. Or it's maybe about it was longevity. a publicity stunt to get Nas to him. Mm. 
Yeah, because remember, it. Nas just dropped the EPM joint, EPMD joint, mm-hmm. and they Nas dropped what about like the last? Well, he dropped two oh, albums. King's Disease in, Three. He, he dropped two albums in the last two years, yeah. right? A year and a half. Yeah. That's unheard of for yeah. a legendary artist yeah. in this day and time. Yeah. So what would so, make him think or say yeah, that someone's really. not relevant and they yeah. just actually and it, I think it went number one at one point on iTunes like yep. it was it was amazing. King's Disease is phenomenal. Man. You you feel me? So. Yeah. Um, just getting back to the youth, how do we keep them on this trajectory, you know, of music and making it fun where people can still enjoy it and not be afraid of it? Because there's, there's a lot of fear now of becoming an artist. Yeah. You know what? I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I think that a lot of the artists that are, um, in that lane are doing that type of music where they're drawing that type of energy. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see the artists that are um, doing uh, music where they're, you know, spitting bars, lyrics. There's a few. Talking family, but are attracting that negative mm. energy. Well, because that's the market. The market for the mm-hmm. negative energy is bigger because that's where the, the, the demand is. Demand is there because of the money yeah. and the power. But how long are these artists lasting? Whether, you know, condolences, some of them are being taken out. Oh, it's fast food rap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like, is it worth it you, you trying to be on top for a year and then someone well, because remember, takes you out in the next time, year? Time is sensitive. you got to realize everything, everybody's down to being distracted to one in two minutes, even Instagram. Yeah. People living their lives by a minute. Right. Or two minutes, so living in a minute or two minutes, like songs used to be four mm-hmm. minutes. Now they you barely get a verse and a hook now. Right. You know, if it's anything more than that, people don't want to hear it. Right. You know, anything longer than mm-hmm. a podcast being an hour, it's three hours, four hours, you get bored. Yeah. You know, so the the technology is is contributing to um, slowing people. I mean, not slowing people down, but advancing them too fast. Right. People and are to- coming in and, and getting it too fast. And to me, I think it's it, it centers around maybe a, even a bigger picture, just society. Mm, yeah. Look at the, the craziness that's going on society in general. People are they're not shootings. thinking at all. Yeah, whether it's, they're killing babies, they're killing girlfriends. They, yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just... Everybody's it's, killing. Everyone's killing. It's just crazy. So I think society, it trickles down in everything that's going on, whether it's music, entertainment. Um, you know, you got these so-called brands that are yeah. putting out stuff that either looks racist right. or pedophile You know what I mean? I, I it's think just one of the a remedies, lot of weird that's going I on. I think one of the remedies, Tiger, is there are no more cause records. And when I say cause, mm-hmm. remember when we had a crisis? There was a cause for a record about that crisis. Mm-hmm. And the artist and it was played on the radio. was played on the radio to <clears throat> show them how to divide themselves, you know, from the negativity and put mm-hmm. the positive in there right. because those records were meaningful records and they were rebellious records against the police brutality and anything that was going on. So mm-hmm. every time somebody made uh, or did something, a record was made because, you know, music is everything and it helped facilitate the soul. Right. You know, so that's right. why, you know, again, the foundation music getting into your spirit. Mm-hmm. So the type of music that they're making is demonic spirit demonic, music. Demonic, yeah. There's and no it's soul. driving these kids, because you got a young mm-hmm. baby that's going twerking and going crazy. The spirit is hit. Yeah. It's almost like when people would go to church and you'd be like, yo, they're just falling out. You'd be mm-hmm. like, what the, the hell's going on? The spirit is going in them. Mm-hmm. So music is that deep. Right. And what they're doing is they're playing with this music mm-hmm. and they're playing with their souls. And To me, it's purposely being done, too. Right. It's, it, yeah, and it's purposely, purposely being allowed. Allowed. Yeah. You know, because you can do something, they don't mm-hmm. necessarily have to allow you to do it. Right. But in our culture, it's being allowed because mm-hmm. what it's doing is it's minimizing the chances of hip hop growing. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, that is one dagger that is going to finish us if we do not take mm-hmm. that dagger out of our backs mm-hmm. and take these batteries out of these kids' backs and make these people feel that they're worth because. They got to find their worth in themselves. Yeah. You know, they finding their worth in a gold chain. Yeah. People finding their worth in a hat, you know, mm-hmm. or, 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 or who has the bigger diamonds in their mouth. 
-hmm. You know, these guys are going out here getting all their teeth platinum. When that could have went right They're to going the to bank die. or an investment, yeah. <laughs> At some point, you know, yeah. the girls with the surgeries and, you know, nothing against someone who want to make a decision to look the way they want, but nobody likes themselves anymore. Yeah. The way that they are. Yeah. Everybody has exactly. to upgrade. Mm -hmm. We're upgrading the, ourselves like phones. Yeah. Technology has yeah, shown man. us how to do that. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Just like that. Yep. We sitting it's over scary. here shooting on the iPhone 14. Two years ago, we mm. were on the 10. Mm. Oh, yeah. Every six months. But we buying the out. phone for a camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, you know that old thing of selling your soul? Mm -hmm. And there's so many different fashions and ways to sell your soul now. You know, that, you know, and who do you sell your soul to? The government, the people who are controlling the masses. Mm -hmm. So right now, the record labels, you know, are in control just as much as they were in the past. And people don't realize that. They gave us these smoke and mirrors that make us think that the Internet was our friend. And the Internet was something that we need to do so we can reach millions of people. Right. But we're doing things like TikTok now. We're not putting our music on TikTok because they slow down the algorithm. Right. If you're not doing everything's stupid. an algorithm, you know. If you're not doing nothing stupid, mm -hmm. you don't get any likes. I know. You don't get any likes, yeah. you don't get any views. Yeah, I post something negative, it's going to get thousands of likes. Thousands of likes, but you post, post some music, like and it's something where you want to. Right. Yeah. Anytime you're trying to empower, mm -hmm. you know. So full blast radio mm -hmm. is empowering people. Yeah, man. We so, don't we don't put none of that negative stuff on the channel. We don't yeah. we don't try to. Like if someone comes in the chat, they're trolling. We just get them out of there. There's, there's no use to be putting out negative energy towards yeah. that. And you just get it out. You just you keep right. it out of your circle. Yeah. You know. Um, That's the best thing to do. Yeah. But when you're parading that around and glorifying it, and the young kids feel like, I want to be that. Yeah. I and they have no killer. direction. Like, have you, you? Do you ever think mm -hmm. that we would get to a point where somebody said, I want to be a shooter? <laughs> you know, you was a shooter back in the day. It's not something you talked about. No. Nah. You're you never telling me. No, nah, you don't tell if nobody. You're a shooter. Mm. Beyond suspicion, you want to go to jail? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I want to do oh, seven no. years and come home. They and, love telling on themselves. And, and then they, they, they're glorifying it. And these guys come home. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but guys come home from doing seven, eight years, and then the people who are in the game give them $2 million just for going to jail and reward them and put them on. Versus somebody being in there with their pen and pad all day sweating. You know how it is. We were sweating bullets. Nobody put us on. Mm -mm. We had to get ourselves on. Get it yourself. Now you can yeah. just walk outside and hustle. Mm -hmm. You can just walk outside and become a rapper. Mm. You can just go to jail and become a rapper. Be more famous going yeah. to jail. It's, so you You're know, supposed to be embarrassed going to jail. Yeah, yeah. You remember jailbird term? Yeah, but call you jailbird when you go to jail. Oh, they call you jailbird. Oh, the term, yeah. yeah you know, mm -hmm. that was a bad name to have. Yeah. Now it's like, I did 10 years. Oh, were you I did jail? seven years. Signed this contract. Yo, son, <laughs> I just came from up north. Mm -hmm. You know, meanwhile, you it's missed like out on honor. 10 years of your life. Yeah, your and kid's you, life. Your, your, your spouse, life. yeah. Yeah, that is, man. So you uh, have a son. Two sons. Two sons. Yep. So are, are, are any of them picking up the turntables? You know, anybody... You, you, you catch anybody trying to, you know, scratch, do this oh, once in a while? Nah, they didn't, but I'm really proud of them because mm. they, they, they're they at the age that they are now, 22 and 26. Mm. And they're doing more at their age than I was doing oh, wow. at their age. Like, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, being a right, knucklehead, right. doing stupid shit. Um, so I'm real proud of them. Um. What was crazy was um, my youngest, Malachi, mm -hmm. he texted me out of the blue. This was maybe about two years ago. He was like, Dad, yo, I just listened to one of the best albums I didn't even know. He was like, one of my uh, best albums that I listened to, Nas and Illmatic. Oh, wow. Bro, I was like, all right, my work is <laughs> Thank done. you, Jesus. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Shout out to Nas and Illmatic. You know what I mean? The, one of the greatest albums ever. So that's what I like about them. Like they're young, they're in this this generation that we was talking about, but they have the mindset to separate what's that stuff and what's good music. Yeah, they listen to a lot of they can cipher through it. But you, yeah. do you think that's because you gave them a foundation? I 
think so. Without even me kind of knowing Watching it. Watching you, but you didn't even know Watching me it. DJing. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was pick, saying that. picking up on your spirit, because like you said, your yeah. spirit travels, and it travels down and trickles down to your sons. Yeah. You know, and, and it's good that they picked it up, because I, I have some children that are very talented, and and uh, bust out and do a rhyme one day, and I'm like, where did you learn how to do that? Yeah, mm. I'm saying you, you was been having music in the house all day long. I mean, where you you think I and learned it, was, it from? You know, and I'm like, wow, okay, and impressive. It was the same thing I picked up, like I said, my father right, hearing right. those records, right. family coming over and they're playing, you mm. know, Diana Ross, Earth, Wind and Fire, Evelyn, Champagne wow, King. Man, you name it, some super it's, super great records. It's That's in their head, not even knowing it. And as I'm playing the records, I'm like, yo, this is from somewhere. I know it. Cause I feel it, but that I'm, made it easier I'm, for you on. to dig through the crates. Yeah, because you already was familiar with yeah a lot of the great records. Mm-hmm. And it just helped me. Like, wow. so do you ever run into any copyright infringements or any like right claims and on, things like that? Because I know you sample a lot. Well, on on YouTube, D, that's why I moved from YouTube because YouTube, um, they don't do the DJs a good service on on there. They really do them a disservice. We're playing records and. If they'll suspend your channel if you're playing too many copyrights, that's why I was really doing. I like I do blends on a regular now because you kind of get away from it. But yeah, um, yeah, they're they're really bad with that with the DJs. Well, let's see if they can approve it. Shout out to YouTube because we are on YouTube. Hey, <laughs> but, you, know, you know, no, I mean, your opinion, I got sixty your, your thousand exactly. members on YouTube. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I appreciate yeah. that. But don't lose that. I just feel they should do a little better for the yeah, DJs absolutely. as far as the record labels because they make. They make money. I mean, they make a million dollars, I think, a minute. But see, here, here it is where we bridge the gap, my brother. Mm-hmm. You know, that platform you're talking about, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the way you see it, I think you should be more vocal about it. I mean, you should you should email them, you know, just because mm-hmm. you, 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 can, you can give them the understanding of what you're experiencing with them. And I think that that may even change the narrative of, of things are doing with the DJs because mm. again here the DJs don't really speak up a lot because you guys are so busy behind the table and being creative right. there's not been a lot of management you know we have an right. award from the core DJs mm. um, with Tony Neal wow. and the core DJs right. hanging up in the studio mm-hmm. and Tony is one of those voices for the DJs you know the coalition mm-hmm. you know we got a whole oh, yeah. bunch of oh, yeah. DJ coalitions and things like that mm-hmm. so I think that forming these big entities you know, for DJs, I think it's it's definitely the more powerful some, voice. Yeah, yeah, be more voices right. so that things like YouTube and and things where you feel like there's an injustice done on 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 the behalf of the DJs. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you should speak up. You know, and maybe you could spearhead something. Who knows? Right. Yeah. You never know. Full blast. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> I believe me. I I thought about you know getting a but like you said, you got to get the right mind of people that mm. that would think like you because mm. I wanted to get a full blast mm. DJ coalition. Right. Try to put stuff stuff out there to people, right. but sometimes when they don't see the vision you see, yeah. they don't take it as seriously. Well, you know, AMS mm-hmm. super support you, bro. You yeah. know, and if there's something that you feel like you yeah. want to do, I think definitely. you should do it. You know, and I think you should mm-hmm. definitely, you know, uh, walk in your journey and walk in mm-hmm. your truth, bro. Because ever since I've known you, you've been nothing but, you know, a transparent person. You know, so I think right. that right now. You know, you can get on your dean right now and, and, and try to, you know, get behind some of the administration stuff and try to get that stuff to, mm-hmm. you know, the right person that could possibly change that narrative because no doubt. it's important, man. DJs are mm-hmm. the foundation and yeah. the future. Definitely. You know, you got house DJs, you got people DJing all across mm-hmm. the country now, mm-hmm. you know, that don't have the knowledge that you have. So mm-hmm. I think that is very important. I can see you writing a book. Wow. Down the yeah. line. Yeah, audio book maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, me and my lady are like, reading audio books. They're real, they're real informative. Yeah, they are. I can I can see that with you, man, because that's kind of what what you got going on is in your spirit. So, mm-hmm. you know, I tell anybody with energy, you know, it can't be created, it can't be destroyed, it can only be transferred. Right. You know, so right. You know, transfer your energy to different places. Definitely. You know, you know what Definitely. they say people putting their eggs in one basket, but then go get some more eggs. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to go get some more. Get some more. You know what I right. Mean? So at the end of the day, bro, like, you know, you just have been super great and amazing at the things that you have done. And uh, in this next 10 minutes, I want to give you the opportunity to let people know about your brand. I see you brought mm-hmm. some merchandise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. full blast, you know, cups, you know what I mean? Full Get blast. Oh, little yeah, drink man. going, you know. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Some you cups know. on you. Know, I probably won't put nothing in mm-hmm. here but some Diet Coke. But All right, hey. <laughs> 
But I definitely you know, know you leave these cups in here, mm -hmm. they will be double be cupping used, it up. No doubt. I might need more than one. Man. I, yeah, you know, I got them. I got, okay, I got cool, plenty cool, more. Cool, so man. I support you, bro. So you all those any, any clothing lines? Any yeah, lines I mean, that you got or any much more merchandise? I actually started a um a clothing line called Real DJs Matter. Oh wow. Um, and that goes back to what you're saying about real DJs matter. Like DJs matter. the ones that put it down, to have the, the spirit, the essence to know what you're doing mm. with those two decks. Keep it going. And you keeping the crowd engaged. Mm. You know, like I say, it's more than just pressing the buttons, more than just yeah. throwing a song on. And I feel right. like real DJs matter. Yeah. You know, so um And being the catcher for the picture. Mm -hmm. You know, the pitcher and the catcher. Mm -hmm. DJ the MC. You know, right. I see I see you guys like, you know, you you're the drummer, you know, for the singer. Mm. You know, that that mechanics. Yes. You know, that mechanics is very important. And I'm telling you, and I can hear this autobiography. Mm. You know, because you got so much to tell right. on that side. Mm -hmm. And who better to tell it than DJ Tiger? A person that, that lives it. Yeah. Super respect. Right. Respect. So t tell that. us where you know, they can find a radio station, you know, okay. where they can find everything so that mm -hmm. people know how to check in with you. All right. Well, um, at least six six times a day at noon, Full Blast Radio live on Twitch. I'm also have a Full Blast Radio app that runs 24 hours. So I'm not DJing live. Um, you'll hear music. It's mostly underground from the old school to new. We don't really play the radio because... Radio got that covered. They play their radio song. Yeah, they but got we that, play the stuff that ain't heard. Mm. Um, anybody from Apollo Brown to Talib to uh, Big Daddy Kane, Karras, you know, we take it back. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, that plays 24 hours a day. Uh, Full Blast Radio, you can get it on your Android and iPhone wow. uh, devices. Um, also, um, uh, shop fullblastradio.com we have all our merch we got hoodies we got scullies just came out for the winter it's got the full blast radio logo on the wow. front Ready. um also sh uh shop.realdjsmatter.com all the real djs matter we have you know dj slogans like i got one that says vinyl turntable speakers oh wow you know, records you know it's just Man, a, some like quotable DJ. joints yeah those quotables yeah. yeah um i have ones that say uh, Aretha, Gladys, Stephanie, oh, you, you know what I mean? There? So, yeah, yeah, I got that. Setting out the foundation, bro. You know, so. See, I knew it was a reason why I wanted you on this show, man. I definitely wanted yeah. you to become a part of it because, you know, a lot of times, man, people get celebrity out and they mm. just start fanning out. Right. You know, and, and I want to be able to give, like you said, with your radio station, the unheard, a Thank time you, to be heard. Sure, you know, appreciate it's, it. It's, it's, it's a source that, that, that we haven't tapped into. It's the right. unknown source, and you know, fear is unknown, man. Yeah. You know, and everything you want is on the other side of fear. Right. You know, so people got to stop being afraid got to because be. that's how you can be controlled yeah. with fear. So here on the Bridge is Hip Hop, mm -hmm. we bridging that gap. Definitely. We ain't afraid to do it. No, you know, so can't. on many levels, man, you know, talking all that jazz with G Fields mm -hmm. has been an amazing, amazing topics today with you. Talking Thank with you, you about your radio show, mm -hmm. and you being like one of the most humble and best DJs i ever seen, bro. I gotta give you flowers while you're here. Thank you, you know, my brother. Double, double salute to you, bro. Man. Double salute to Thank you. you man. Always love, brother. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming. This yeah. is G Field signing off with the Bridges Hip Hop. And shout out to AMS and the whole team. And shout out to the Bridges Hip Hop and our whole team, man. And we just love what you're doing, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Salute. Oh, well, man. Thank you, brother.